Hello again. Well, we're about halfway through the tales of Percy Peacock now, which means we must be at chapter four. Farewell to Brown Sea Island. The date is Friday, August the 8th, 2003. This is an important date. Firstly, it's Percy's second birthday. Two years. Who would have thought it? And secondly, well, let's see. Percy had been in a few scrapes over the last year. He'd got bigger and bigger and was as tall as both Mummy and Daddy Peacock, which was, well, unusual. He was extremely handsome and colourful and by now was something of a local character. His search for adventure had got him into trouble on more than one occasion. There was the time when, despite knowing that peacocks can only fly a very short distance, he felt very strong and decided to try and fly to the mainland. If you remember the first time he went, he hid on the ferry to get there. Right, Percy, he said to himself, you can do this. It's just a question of mindset. Think positively. He decided that his best tactic was to run to the end of the jetty at full speed, launch himself into the air and flap his wings at enormous speed. How could it fail? To be fair, the first two parts of the plan went really well. He started to run, and as the wind began to whistle in his ears, he saw the end of the jetty approaching at great speed. As he reached the end, he closed his eyes and leapt. As he threw back his wings to start flapping, he hit the water with an enormous splash and immediately took a huge mouthful of seawater and started choking. Luckily... His rather amusing run down the jetty had been watched by several somewhat surprised onlookers and after a fairly short time, Percy was hauled from the water, coughing, spluttering and feeling pretty silly. You can probably imagine what Mummy Peacock had to say when she found out. Then there was a time when he thought that climbing a tree might be good fun. All I can say is, it wasn't. Then there was the time when he thought that pretending to be a matador with a local bull by using one of his wings as the cape might be a good game. In his defence, the bruises went away after about a month. Then there was a time at... Well, I think you get the idea. By now? So, on August the 8th, 2003, Percy's second birthday, he came to a decision. It was a very important decision, a life-changing decision. He decided that he was going to leave Brown Sea Island. He yearned for adventure, for excitement, for fame and fortune. He wanted to meet people. He wanted to be a star. He wasn't quite sure where or how, but he was sure that these things weren't going to happen on Brown Sea. Therefore, he had to make plans to run away. He sat down and thought. Right, Percy, my boy, he said. We need a plan. He thought for a bit longer and a bit longer still. Nothing seemed to be suggesting itself to him. And after a bit, he said, I've got it. I won't have a plan. That'll be my plan. No plan. Very pleased with his no plan plan, Percy decided the quicker he got going, the better. He did have a plan for the first bit. He needed to stow away on the boat again to get to the mainland. He certainly didn't fancy trying to fly after the previous experience. He had no possessions and he hoped to be able to find food on the way. So he was ready to go. But had to decide whether to say goodbye to Mummy and Daddy Peacock. He wanted to, but he knew they would try and stop him. So sadly, he made the decision to steal away without saying anything. He could always send them a postcard later. So as fast as he could, he headed for the quayside. The boat was there, and he was just about to work out the best way to get on board without being seen when the boat driver shouted, What oh, Percy Peacock! What a lift again! Percy waved his wing in a sort of, yes please, sort of way, and the boat driver said, well, hop on board then, we're just about to leave. Percy needed no second bidding, 
And before you could say, Captain Birdseye, the boat was sailing at full speed towards Sandbanks. When they arrived, he hopped off and gave a cheery wave to the boat driver. Then he looked around. At that moment, it seemed that possibly the no plan plan might not have been quite such a good idea as he'd first imagined. While he was thinking, he looked around in the undergrowth to find something to eat. He always thought better with a mouthful of food. To his great joy, someone had thrown away a slice of melon and Percy tucked into it, particularly the seeds, with great gusto. That cheered him up immensely. He began to think that this was quite a nice place, and perhaps he would have a little rest before deciding what to do. He strolled down the road, giving a wide berth to the place where the man had shouted shoo at him on his last visit, and after walking for a bit, he saw a car parked up ahead, with a man at the wheel fast asleep. It had an open back end, and the man was in the covered bit at the front. There were some empty sacks in the back, which looked like they might be very comfortable. Percy hopped upon the back wheel and then jumped into the back. He settled down on the sacking in warm sun and was quickly fast asleep. When he awoke, he couldn't quite remember where he was or walk, work out what was happening. It appeared to be very windy, and he appeared to be going very fast. For a minute, he thought he might be dreaming. He cautiously lifted his head and looked out. Ah, now he remembered. He was in the back of an open van. Actually, it was a Land Rover, but Percy didn't know that. When he had dropped off, the driver had been asleep, but now he was very much awake and driving for all he was worth. Percy, of course, had no idea where they were going, but luckily the driver seemed to. Percy began to consider his position. He didn't have any clear idea of where he wanted to go, so anywhere was good at this point in time. The sack seemed very comfortable. The chap driving didn't know he was there, or if he did, he didn't care. <laughs> Time to go with the flow, Percy said to himself. Stay put. They'd been driving for quite a long time when the driver's phone rang. He could only hear one side of the conversation, but it was very interesting. He heard the man say, Hi. Well, good, thank you. Yes, making good time. I should be in Worcester in about 40 minutes. Yeah, see you later. Bye. After a bit of thought, Percy said to himself, Worcester? Well, I've never heard of that. Sounds like fun, though. Well, looks like you're going to Worcester, Percy, my lad. Well, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs>